guys welcome back to the channel so i am wearing my headphones today um because it kind of makes the audio better i can hear myself so i know how loud i'm being and also it makes me feel like joe rogan which makes me feel powerful so today i wanted to do a witchy book review for all of you i've got a lot of books it is alarming to me that i have never done one of these i've been a youtuber for over a year now how dare i so yeah some of these are like witchy instructions, learning, nonfiction type books. Some of them are fiction. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a big fiction reader. And um, October, November, December, those are my peak months for doing all of my, my fiction reading. And um, I gravitate towards witchy books, specifically anything where the main character is a witch. And bonus points if it's sort of witch trials-esque, and I do have a couple of those. So we're gonna hop right into it. I'm gonna have some fun with this one. A good lighthearted video. I keep promising that. I keep promising it, and I am delivering on that today. This one will be lighthearted. Let's jump into it, shall we? First things first, how could I not start with this one? Metal Never Lies by my boy Sam Thompson. Sam is the owner of Raven's Keep Forge. Please follow him on Instagram. He actually made uh, this pendant that I wear in all of my videos. Um, he's made me a couple actually. They're absolutely gorgeous. Everything he touches, everything he makes is such high quality. Everything, he also charges it with magic, which this is the thing. If I'm gonna buy a magical tool, right, I really want it to be something that I can't make myself. And um, although Sam does offer courses on metalwork, so if that is something that you're interested in, definitely check that out. For me, I am very uncoordinated and I do have a fear of um, harming myself because of that lack of coordination. And so I will most likely, most likely, never end up getting into metal forging. Although never say never. So yeah, Metal Never Lies by Sam Thompson. Now, I'll be honest, I have not read this yet. I just got it in last week and my life is uh, an absolute disaster right now. So I haven't had a chance to start this yet. Um, but based upon the back that I've read and also just knowing Sam as a person, this is going to be super, super freaking interesting. The other thing is that it's unique, you know? How many books have I read on the basics of Wicca and calling the quarters and stuff that I, not? it's not like to say that I know it all, but like we've been through, most of us in the witchy community, we've read the intro books. I want something different, you know? I want something that's gonna stretch my creativity. I've never thought of how working with metal could be incorporated into my magical practice before, so I just, I feel like I'm gonna have a really great time with this one. Um, and like I said, it's gonna, it's gonna get me to think about some things that I hadn't been thinking about before, you know? So that is book number one. And when I read through it, I think I will do a more in-depth review. I do think I wanna get into like more in-depth book reviews on this channel. So let me know if you're interested in that. In keeping with the instructional books, um, I'm gonna go through two more and these three, Sam and then these other two are my favorite instructional like witchcraft practice books. So the second one is Consorting with Spirits by Jason Miller. This one is all about forging a connection with spirits, with gods, with elementals. There's a whole a whole bunch of different um, you know types of energies and entities that you can connect with that this book is relevant to and it's detailed. Oh boy is this detailed. I mean the, the, nothing about this is surface level at all. Like if you if you're interested in working and communing with the spirit realm, I would even say this is a must read. It is um, now certainly you can take some of the things discussed in here and get even more in depth with it if that's something you're interested in. But this is not um, cookie cutter. This is not like, oh, just anything at Barnes and Noble. Um, I'm also not someone that says this is not for beginners. I don't like when people say things like that. Uh, books are for everyone. Now, do I think you should do the things in the books if you're literally just starting? Probably not the best idea, but I'm actually, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Jason covers that. Or at least, you know, some things to keep in mind to stay safe. This, that's actually, I think this is a Kellyanne Maddox thing. I'm pretty sure that she said this on one of her videos. But if someone says to you that you shouldn't do something or that doing something is dangerous, but they don't tell you why it's dangerous or how to do it safely, don't listen to that person, you know? Um, there's no, I'm not a gatekeeper. I'm not a fan of scaring people away from the craft. Um, safety is important, but we're all adults here, you know? I love this book. Again, very detailed. You There is, 
you will learn something. Unless you are have been studying spirit work for a very, very long time in depth, um, you're going to learn something from this. Next one, Psychic Witch, Matt Arn. First of all, did I say that right? Matt Arn? Arn. Arn. Um, first of all, gorgeous book. Look at the aesthetics of this. This sits out on my coffee table all of the time. Um, again, with the detailed books, man, this one is all about, um, not that you're talking with spirits in this one. This one is about psychic development. And this book is basically just exercise after exercise after exercise of like tangible things that you can do to improve your psychic muscles. And again, I appreciate this. I am sick of reading books that talk about things solely in the abstract. I'm like, can someone, can someone give me some advice on a thing to do? Like, give me something, you know, and this book delivers on that to the point where you don't even have to read this thing cover to cover, like all the way through intentionally. Um, I, I, you know, I might recommend reading through the whole thing on the front end, but now since I have, I can literally just pick this up and, and go to a random page and I'll be like, oh shit, yeah, I should try that exercise and refresh that and, and try that again. There are just so many practical exercises in here and like things you can visualize and, and ways of increasing. Oh God, it's just so good. It's good and it's pretty to look at, you know? I appreciate that. Okay, one more, I, I lied, there's another one. Um, One more practical, practical, like do this tangible instruction book. Uh, Woman Heal Thyself by Jean Elizabeth Blum. I'm also not all the way through this one. I'm sorry guys, I'm doing the best I can. This one is about the forbidden, they're called forbidden pressure points within Chinese medicine. And it's around specifically pregnancy, the ending of a pregnancy, catch my drift. And so yeah, I thought this would be an interesting read. This is this is tough to get your hands on, I'm not gonna lie. I got this from a library that was selling it. And that's kind of fun because now it has the library cover on it. And I really liked those when I was a kid. So now I own one. I am not nearly enough the way through this to be able to speak to the contents in here. And this that's the other thing about, you know, sort of Eastern medicine or sort of uh, holistic medicine where it's not Western medicine, guys. It's not science. You know, there's spirituality involved in it um, and body work involved in it. And those are things that I believe in and subscribe to. Now, do I think we should do them solely in place of Western medicine? No, not at all. I don't think that's advisable. But in conjunction with Western medicine or in cases where Western medicine is illegal, shall we say? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I want to know. I want to know information that I could potentially use on myself. You know what I mean? So again, this I think this is the only one that I would say be an adult if you're going to read this one. I mean... Yeah, yeah, that's that's all I'm going to say on that. And um, similar to Sam's book, I do think I will end up doing a more in-depth review on this one. All right, so now we're going to move on to books about the Morrigan and specifically um, books about learning about the Morrigan and sort of developing your relationship with her. I want to say on the start, anything by Stephanie Woodfield, I like. First, I want to start with this Prayers to the Morrigan book, and this is by Stephanie Woodfield and Karen Storminger. Take a look at this cover. I'm sorry. This is gorgeous. Like, ah, uh, and the artwork inside of it, every page, just every page is literally, look at this, look at this. Come on, gorgeous. This book is gorgeous. It is gorgeous to look at. What it's filled with are uh, devotional prayers that Stephanie and Karen have written to the Morrigan. And I pick a different one of these every day. Um, sometimes I'll use it as a little bit of divination where I'll ask the Morrigan to sort of, you know, based on my situation, based on where my head's at, like I'm going to flip to a page and you tell me what you want me to say. I've also started using this in my channeled tarot messages from the Morrigan. Uh, if you're, if you've watched those videos, we'll do a prayer to her before we start the actual reading, which is something I, I really like doing. Um, so yeah, I, I highly, highly recommend this book. Next is, uh, how could I not mention this one? The Book of the Great Queen by Morpheus Ravenna. Similarly, the art in this is absolutely gorgeous, um, but it is very text heavy. There's not as much, you know, as much art as the Stephanie Woodfield um, prayer book. This is 
my Bible, basically, right? That's, I mean, that's, this is the closest that we have as followers to the Morrigan to any sort of, any sort of, of Bible, aside from reading the actual lore, um, which I, I'm not able to read Irish. And also, even I find, and this might be like a neurodivergence thing here, I am autistic, if you didn't know, um, when I, when I try to read the actual texts that the Morrigan is in that have been translated, even the best of translators, I struggle. I have a really hard time retaining what is being said and even understanding what is being said because of the way that it's phrased. And I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one, right? And that's why this particular book is so impressive because there are parts of it that I read and I'm like, I'm struggling. You know, I got to read that sentence four or five times. But then Morpheus is really good about breaking it down and kind of explaining it to you and walking you through it. It is a heavy read, right? Like this is an academic text to be sure. This actually, it reminds me of college. If you look uh, in my front, um, in my front page here, I don't know if it's gonna focus, but I like wrote down, I like wrote down, sorry, I'm like screaming into the microphone. I wrote down dates in the margin that I wanted to have the chapters read by. Um, kind of just treated it like a, like a school assignment. I will say when it comes to the Morrigan and her lore, I have very little memorized off the top of my head. I am very bad. Again, this might be a neurodivergent thing. I don't know. But I am very, very bad at reading a word that is not in native English. So like the names of the text that the Morrigan is in. I have a hard time reading those and then committing it to memory. Like I could probably write it down. Or if you give me like a list of, of things and you were like, hey, circle the books that the Morrigan's in, I could probably do that. It's just for whatever reason, like recalling it to verbal memory is so challenging for me. And so I was struggling for the longest time just based on the internet and videos. Like I was like, I, I'm, I'm having a really hard time wrapping my head around her story and her lore and what we have of it. And this book has been an absolute godsend. Like it's just... It's great. It's great to have reference to. Again, you can use this for divination of like, hey, what Morgan, what do you want me to focus on? Flip through it um, and then kind of, you know, maybe there's something she wants you to learn. Also, if you're someone that gets overwhelmed by the size of this, um, you could even, you know, chop like dance around in it a little bit. And like maybe you're not in the mood to read the first chapter. So you read the second chapter, you know. There's definitely, I definitely advocate for studying in the way that works for you and not putting this crazy amount of pressure on yourself to have things memorized and, you know, do things a certain way. I just, I know that the internet can get a little bit elitist when it comes to that, shall we say. So yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of this book. I'm a big fan of anything written by Morgan Daimler. I feel like she ha also has a really great academic um, hold on the Morrigan. Yeah, I appreciate the work that uh, that Morpheus has done here. So that is going to do it for the Morrigan books, I think. I do have more, but I think that, that those two are really my favorite too. Now we're going to get into the fiction. So the first fiction book that I want to highly, highly, highly recommend to all of you is Slewfoot by Brown. Now I've spoken about this before, but I'm willing to bet that you haven't bought it yet. And um, that's a shame. You should. Whether you buy it or get it from a library, you do you. But this book, I am... Mm, this is by far my favorite book that I have ever read. Um, in fact, I fully intend on rereading it, I think every October. I think I'm going to reread this every single October. It's just that good. And is it technically the best book in terms of like, you know, writing no, I'm not a literary scholar, but I've I've heard it said on the internet that it's not the most technically perfect book. I don't care. I like Brahms writing style. Um, this story really does something for me. Because this is fiction and I really want to sell you guys on it, I'm going to give you a high level overview without any spoilers. 
Um, so this book revolves around Abatha, our main character, who is depicted on the cover here. And um, she lives in a small town. It's very Salem, Massachusetts-esque, although I don't think it's called Salem. There, there are themes of, um, you know, witch trials, being accused of witchcraft. There's also a little bit of nature spirits that get involved. Abatha ends up interacting. Uh, I don't want to give you guys too many spoilers here, but ooh, let me just read. I'm going to read. So this is in Connecticut, the year 1666. Uh, an ancient spirit awakens in a dark wood. The wild folk call him father, slayer, protector. The colonists call him slewfoot, demon, devil. To Abatha, a recently widowed outcast, alone and vulnerable in her pious village, he is the only one she can turn to for help. Together, they ignite a battle between pagan and Puritan. Yeah, do you get it now? One that threatens to destroy the entire village, leaving nothing but ashes and bloodshed in its wake. Ooh, the ending. The setup for this book is pretty long, but does it pay off in the end? Oh my god. The end of this, if you are someone who really enjoys revenge, right? You really want to see a good, lovable character just get shit on and then watch them wreak havoc as revenge. If that appeals to you uh, as a theme, you are going to love, love this book. I want this to become a movie. Brahm, if you're watching, I want you to make a tarot deck and I want you to make this into a movie. Last fiction book, and this is actually not pure fiction because it's kind of based in reality. Uh, the Manning Tree Witches by A.K. Blakemore. Now, was this as fun as Slewfoot? No. This is a lot more dry and a lot more, well, because it was a lot more real, right? It's not really fantastical, so to speak. It is it is a more historically accurate depiction of what actually happened to women in the European witch trials. Um, this one is a little bit of a rougher read as well. Slewfoot is, because it's so mystical and magical, you can kind of remove yourself from some of the darker, more like painful aspects of it. This one this one gets a little rough, especially towards like the middle and the end. Um, it kind of messed with me a little bit, in all honesty. I definitely had some nightmares. And I don't want to hype it up too much because it's not horror scary. It's like humanity is dark, scary, and like disturbing in that context. It's not super graphic. I've definitely read more body horror graphic books. Um, but there is a little bit of that. And it's just the hopelessness in it is so tough. It's it's tough. Um, so, but it's a good book. You know what I mean? I'm one of those people. I like dark things. We've been through this. I like dark things. If I'm going to read a horror book, give it to me. Oh, that reminds me. I've got one more. Okay. So this last one has nothing to do with witchcraft, um, but it is a scary book. And that is Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. Um, if you're interested in horror books at all, and you've been on the internet, um, you've probably heard of this one. But the main themes in this one that really got me that I really enjoyed uh, have to do with a religious abuse, which is a theme that highly appeals to me. You know, if you've watched my podcast, Black Sheep and Broomsticks, you probably already know that about me. But this one has to do with possession. It has to do with religious abuse. It has a twist at the end. Now, maybe, maybe the twist didn't get you, but it damn sure got me. Like, I kind of had an idea where it was going, but I, I did not see the end of this coming. And it's dark and it's scary in a really good way, though. I think this one is another one that I will most likely reread every fall. All right. I definitely have more books that I like, um, but that was a lot. I hit you guys with a lot there. So uh, drop a comment down below and let me know if you enjoy book reviews, if you'd like me to do any of those books in a little bit more in depth, or if you'd like me to share more books in the future. Um, also, a uh, quick merch plug for the Black Sheep and Broomsticks. This one has Charlie, our little demon horse. It says uh, different, not demonic on the uh, chest here. I will link our merch down below. Check out the podcast again, Black Sheep and Broomsticks linked below. And um, yeah, if you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel, like, leave a comment. All of it really helps me. As always, thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>